What's up everyone? Today we're continuing the talk about flexibility training and we are really talking about how much you should stretch. This is something that a lot of people don't understand and most people are getting this wrong. People think that the more you stretch, the quicker you'll get flexible, but we're going to demystify that. What's up tribe? Yanni here, across the table I've got Rad, Phil is on hiatus today, but we got Richie behind the mixer, so all is well. Together we are Unity Gym and the Unify Movement System. Remember guys, if you want to learn a little bit more about how we turn driven people into athletes, you can learn all of the biggest insights that we've discovered over the last three decades of our own training. In our blueprints, we have a flexibility, strength and nutrition blueprint, and we're about to launch a at-home workouts blueprint and a motivation blueprint what's up rad oh not much you know this is a a good one for me this is because this whole talk is the um this the topic today is, is was one of the biggest inspirations behind creating the mobility masterclass version two um is is the amount um that you do stretching and it's something that i've learned a lot about in recent times and more is not always the answer yeah that's right so let um to build a bit of context um you know, we should share our experience. Rad and I, for those of you who don't know us or who, who are new to the group or who may be new to the podcast or new to the YouTube channel, uh, we weren't always uh, into flexibility training. You know, Rad has always had a little bit more of a history of flexibility training to me because of his martial arts, but he's certainly, you certainly wouldn't have, wouldn't have considered him flexible 10 years ago. Uh, he was probably Five more flexible. Five years, yeah. <laughs> Five years he ago, he was probably I have been a, a, always a little bit more flexible than the average person, but he wasn't super flexible. He used to have insanely tight hip flexors and a few areas of the body that were problematic, like most people do. But myself, definitely, un, uh, uh, would be considered unflexible. I used to struggle to touch my toes only a few mm. years ago, and you know, we got to a point in our training where I, I was very much inspired by bodybuilding initially. Uh, originally, I was a boxer and uh, played a bit of soccer and rugby league. And then I got inspired by bodybuilding because I was quite skinny and trained like a bodybuilder. Um, and uh, yeah, really beat myself up. Uh, Rad sort of uh, had a bit of a hiatus from his martial arts training, uh, went to the army and um, really came out quite um, uh, bruised and battered because he uh, had uh, aggravated a, a, an underlying issue in his back that was quite bad. and. Yeah, we both sort of met in the middle, sort of wondering how we could make ourselves feel a bit better because I had gained a lot of muscle mass, but at the expense of my performance, I um, suffered quite a severe uh, injury on the soccer field. And um, yeah, we were just a mess, really. And so we sort of thought, how can we do this a bit better to make ourselves feel a bit better? <coughs> and uh, that's where the Unify Movement System was sort of born. Um, coming together uh, uh, with Richard as well. You know, we watched our performance start to increase as, as our flexibility increased. And we thought, wow, there's definitely something in this. And um, when you try something, when you're doing something new and you're learning on the fly with your own experiences and doing your own research, you tend to just go at it as hard as you possibly can. And we all, we all want results as quickly as possible. And the flexibility uh, pathway is not linear, which makes it even harder. You know, you get this urge to just do it more, do it more, stretch more, stretch harder, you know. But what we didn't know in the early days was that uh, flexibility training, stretching, is a load mechanism for the muscles and for the body, for the, for the um, passive structures, the tendons, the ligaments. And therefore, therefore, stretching is very much has a response in the body like strength training. It leaves you with DOMS and it can leave you, um, you can overstretch, you can over, just like you can overtrain, just like you can overlift, you know, and, and you can actually stifle the progress by doing so. And it took us, you know, quite a few years to figure out what, uh, how that sort of works and, 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 and how much you can really affect your progress by o overdoing it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, I mean, the, the best example that I can think of for, for personally is that <clears throat> when I, I can remember this really clearly, it was about five or six years ago, when I, my journey into the flexibility, really taking it seriously with flexibility was that, um, you know, I went through this whole process in my, in my early to mid thirties when I got out of the army and, and we were training again and we were starting a business and I, 
started to really question whether I had it in me to put the work in to get the results that I wanted. You know, for the first time in my life, I was I was uh, I was more aware of of what I needed to do to get what I wanted. I didn't just have these lofty goals and thinking I just want to get that. I, I was think I, I became really aware of wow, this is how much work it's going to take for me to get there. This is not something that I can approach from a maybe some weeks I'll work for it and maybe other weeks I won't. And, you know, I, I realized how consistent I needed to be and what I needed to do. And, and I went through this whole process of, of working out whether I was willing to do that, you know, in my, you know, I was getting older and my body was very stiff and sore when I got out of the army. But I made the decision pretty quickly that, that I did want to. I, I, my, my, the way that I framed it and approached it turned on its head real quick. And I started to think, well, Jesus, I'm only in my mid thirties. I'm not, <laughs> not old at all. You know, I've got a lot, lot of life ahead of me and I don't want to be, I don't, I, I didn't want to be one of those people that was a has-been that, that always showed people the pictures of what they used to be able to do or talk yeah. about what I wanted to be somebody that could do it. You know, it's understandable though, because mm. you start thir- it's really around understandable. that thir- mid thirties mark, even early thirties, you start to feel the mileage. For, uh, at least for me, oh I, yeah, Shoot I started you. to feel the yeah. mileage for the first time. Yeah, I did too. And I and I had, you know, I started to think, shit, I probably should have paid a bit more attention to taking care of my body. Yeah. And look, Rad yeah. and I were, you know, we had a period in our twenties and our teenage years where we ate maccas and 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 put all the wrong food into our body and, and all that. Drugs like and most people and drugs and alcohol abused ourselves. But from the from late twenties on, we we started to really really focus on cleaning things up and 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 li- walk the walk. But so I didn't even really get serious until I was in my early to mid 30s. I, I still wasn't serious until. Yeah, really? Yeah, definitely. Not serious. Yeah. I, I was half, half. Yeah. I was half in and half out. Yeah. You know, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I remember clicking over to like 30, 31, 32, and I started to feel like, whoa, things are feeling different. It was exactly the same age Harder, for me. Yeah. Harder to lose weight. If I'd gone on a vacation and just hit the beers or something like that for a while and put on a few, a few kilos. I remember we, um, Kalisha and I were... Meant to go snowboarding. We found out that she was pregnant with our first child and we cancelled. We had to cancel our snowboarding trip to Japan and uh, we decided last minute just to go on a cruise uh, because we, we needed a vacation. We'd geared up in our heads that we we're having a two-week vacation. So we went on a cruise. We had a, a, a client in the gym who worked for, uh, for Carnival and he said, man, I'll hook you up, family and friends, you know, give you a real pimp room, everything. And whatever. And it made sense because Kalisha was pregnant. We couldn't do anything too crazy. And... Um, yeah, we just ate and uh, like I drank a bit. She didn't, of course, because she was pregnant, but we just ate and ate and sat on our asses and came back and I was like eight kilos heavier. And I was like, how did I put on eight kilos? I mean, a lot of it's fluid retention, but there was definitely some weight there, some fat there that I'd gained in, in only about three weeks. And uh, it took me ages to get rid of that weight. Mm. And that was the real turning mm. point for me, just thinking, wow, in the past, I would have just come into the gym, flogged mm. myself, and within eight, like a few weeks, that would be gone, mm. you know? Well, let's keep it on track with flexibility. And yep. uh, I'll continue my story, which was that when I did start to, when I, I made a decision when I was, um, I can't remember if I was 36 or 37, it was about that time. Um, when I said to myself, I'm going to become flexible. I, I, I've wanted to be flexible my whole life. When I did martial arts, I wanted to, and I never achieved it. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do the work. And when I started, I just, I, I, I did other stretches, of course, but my benchmark was the middle splits. I yeah. wanted to be able to do the middle splits. I'd never be, been able to do it before, and I wanted to be able to do it. And I was doing it five days a week, and I was basically just really doing a lot of volume. Like the only thing I'd learned about was an, an, um, active stretching and passive stretching. So I was doing loaded middle splits, but there was no programming to it or anything. I was really just doing a lot of volume. And I injured myself a lot. I tore my adductors many, many, many times, and they were just minor tears, but it's the tear that you go, oh, that's a bit sore. And then you try to stretch the next day and you can't even go to 70% of where you were the day before. Yep. And then you try to push it and then it gets worse. And then you can't stretch at all in the middle splits for anywhere from two weeks to six weeks was my experience. And that process happened for a couple of years. Um, and then I started to learn more about programming for flexibility. And we started. I started to do a little bit more of a balanced approach um, by training different parts of the body. And that's where I had my first big breakthrough when I started to... Um, even out the work that I was putting into, into my glutes and hamstrings and you know front splits and all that and back bridge. But now when I do the middle splits, I only do it one day a week. That's it, yeah. one day. And that, I'll, I'll clarify on that. I still do the 18 minute mobility routine, which is what we've renamed 
the 18 minute stretching routine version two for those of you that just got it if i've had a bunch of people say oh, i can't see the 18 minute stretching routine version two it's because i renamed it because that's a more accurate description of what it is and i wanted to get off the bat with that anyway so in the 18 minute mobility routine that i do daily I do the middle splits, but I don't go, I, all I do is go to where it's comfortable and sit there for a minute and that's it. What I mean is I only train the middle splits to try and get better at it once a week. And if you see me when I train the middle splits, it is a full on workout, man. Yeah. It is it's like, it's like I do all these different exercises loaded to lead up to the middle splits. There's sweat. It's a, it's not a Zen moment. And then when I actually do the middle splits at the end, I'm doing like, you know, feet elevated, straddle up deficits, you know, loaded with weight. Like it's a full on workout. I only do that once a week yeah. and I get better results from that than when I was doing it five days a week. And this is a really big, um, uh, I think misconception um, uh, proven, furnished by the the amount of trolls we get on social media, <laughs> commenting negatively on w uh, posts or workouts where we say you should only train a yeah. uh, flexibility movement once a week. Yep. And um, it, first and foremost, it's really un really important for people to understand that. Uh, training for flexibility and training for mobility in that movement are two very different things. And what Rad just said there, doing the 18 minute mobility routine to maintain and also solidify the flexibility gains that he's achieved in his workout for that are two very different things. And you do them um, uh, at different frequencies, you know, and, and of course, much different intensities. And to reinforce what Rad just said, the the effort and intensity that goes into a flexibility workout to gain flexibility is no different to a strength workout it is you you are pushing it hard and you should um uh you know you, you, the dosage and the intensity and the volume is very very important just like a strength workout you can't over you should like you got to avoid overdoing it you got to avoid stifling remember the, the, the concept of flexibility training, the science behind it, the ad actual adaptation that we spoke about on Tuesday, if you, if you missed that show, I urge you to go back and watch the science behind uh, stretching. You, if you push too hard, you stifle the process. You have the complete op opposite effect to what you're going <coughs> for in your flexibility training, you know? And yeah, we get into all these, um, we get these trolls all the time saying, this is absolute nonsense. You can't get flexible only training once a week, da, 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 da. Now, first and foremost, I don't think they understand what we mean by training. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, I no, don't think, don't. I don't they think don't. people get the idea that, um, you know, training is intense and, uh, um, maintaining is, uh, is different, you know, well, but it's not just that, like if you like the middle splits workouts that I do and the workouts that we have in the, um, you know, that I'm writing in the mobility masterclass version two, and even from the, from version one, they, if you did it without anything else and all you did was that one workout and you did not stop, it would still take you about 40 minutes. No yeah. one does that. Every pe most people would probably do it in about an hour. So if you add it onto your strength training, like what we do, it takes an hour and a half to two hours. That's just the middle splits. Yeah. What are you going to do? Do the middle? Do that? Every, when are you going to do your front splits? If you do that, when are you going to do your back bridge? Like the, it takes that long to to do yeah. a workout on the one, yeah. um, on the one flexibility movement. You know. So the idea is that you really go for it, and just like you would, like you couldn't, you couldn't say, you know, what, I'm going to train my chest and my back and my arms and my legs and my deadlift and my. Well, abs some and people everything. do. Some people do, and they get shit results. Yeah, they do. I mean, look for a beginner. It, it, for for an absolute beginner off the bat, you can do that. You know, you can yeah. train all over body. But they, but the reason why that works is because a be beginner responds very poorly to high volume. Yeah, beginners respond uh, really well to low volume in strength training. You know, and if you give them too much volume, they they, they can't walk the next yeah. day. Yeah, that's so right. um, that's why it works really well for a beginner. But and, yeah, and that's probably a really important insight. Um, you know, to point to point out. The different stages of your training age, which refers to your experience, how long you've been training consistently for under these protocols, under the uh, uh, under these conditions, that plays a huge role in how you're going to respond to uh, different programs. You know, you can't give a professional athlete's program to an absolute beginner and vice versa. Mm -hmm. The athlete won't adapt at all to a complete beginner's program, you know. And so you need you need to take that into consideration, too, you know. Um, 
so people that are sitting there going, oh, well, I'm doing, I'm getting great results doing the 18 minute mobility routine every day. Yeah, absolutely. If you're at that level, it's going to produce amazing results. And it did for us. Uh, and that's a the, mobility routine as well, which we'll, we'll, which we'll talk about the difference in just a sec. Um, yeah. Do you want to, we'll give a couple of shout outs yeah, here. Absolutely. Um, so if, you, if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, please just give a little hi and where you're watching from so we can give you a shout out. Please do, because I can see we've got a lot of people on the stream here. So Vinny Brown is saying great content this week, guys. Um, thanks a lot, Vinny. That's awesome. Uh, Lee Clements is saying good morning all, here to learn a bit more. Dave Clark saying hi all. Greg Gillespie's on here saying hi, Yanni and Rad. And then Lee Clements is saying, so mobility daily and flexibility weekly. Yes and no. Mobility daily, absolutely. And it's really important to wrap your head around this. I know that even when I s explain this simply, people still have a lot of questions, but I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. Mobility is an umbrella term for taking your joints through full range of motion. So doing a squat with a barbell, if you go ask to grass, it, even though it's, you do it as a strength movement, it is mobility training. Okay, yeah. Doing an overhead press, if you lock out your shoulders in full flexion above your head and push your, he your head forward as you do it, it is mobility. Um, if you did a bicep curl where you're leaning back on a 45 or a 30 degree bench and you let your arms go as far back into extension as they can and do curls, it, that you're training mobility there as well. But at the same time, token what we refer to as mobility training in in the ums system when we say do some mobility daily something like the 360 hip mobility something like just going down into a squat and wiggling your hips around yeah, an air squat you just, know just, yeah just yeah basically just Our taking squat routine that's yeah. a great mobility yeah, routine that's right yeah. taking your joints through the full range of motion which is why at the end of the 18 minute mobility routine i do the front splits middle splits pancake pike and back bridge just once not trying to push and get better at it just trying to take my body to the end of its range of motion just to keep it there you know, it's use it or lose it, right? So that's mobility training. Flexibility training is doing sets and reps with the goal to increase your mobility. It's done at a much higher level intensity and it is done in a way that fatigues you. So another way to describe a good way to use mobility training is a warm up. We don't do any stretching in our warm-ups. If you do the UMS warm-up or the ultimate warm-up routine that we've got, that a lot of our listeners have got, that's all mobility training, okay? It's not stretching, it's not flexibility training, but if you do what we do in the mobility masterclass or in the stretches between the sets that we do in the UMS online coaching, that's all flexibility training because you're doing multiple sets of the same movement with the goal to increase your range of motion, to increase mobility. And when you do that, Lee, not flexibility weekly, that's not the right way. I think most movements I like to do twice a week except the middle splits. The middle splits is just such a, like the adductors are really small muscles and they can get really overloaded. And it, I, I've just found from the, my coaches that when they've coached me on the right dose that we got down to one session a week and I got better results when I was, yeah. than when I was doing it more than that. Yeah, there's a lot of passive structures that the, the middle splits put under a lot of strain and stress that because the, for instance, to give you an example, the knee, the knee joint is not really designed to take load laterally like that. Uh, and the passive structures, the ligaments and the tendons in there get loaded heavily when yeah. you're doing middle splits training. Yeah. And so you need time for those passive structures to recover. Uh, there's also other elements in the hip that put, get put under a lot of stress and strain when you're doing mobility training. There's different shapes of the pelvis, the pitch of the acetabulum, which is the socket that uh, takes the uh, femur into it. Um, the, 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 all these different little nuances affect your middle splits. And, you know, you can put a lot of stress and strain on the passive structures in the hip as well. So you just, I, it's just the one that we tend to, in my, we, we in, have found in, that you get better results if you only do once a week. And also from personal experience, the only injuries, I'm trying to think if I've ever injured myself from flexibility training in anything that wasn't the middle splits. And I don't think I have. I think the only injuries that I've personally sustained have been adductor tears from my middle splits training. I've never, I don't think I've ever really injured my hamstrings or lower back or calves or anything from my pike training. I don't think I've ever done my hip flexors from front splits. Um, Your knee from internal rotation. Oh, my knee. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my yeah. knee. Yeah. And that's why I've stopped. That's why I've removed internal rotation training from um, all of the um, programs. I, I still think, I still think that the four point stretch that we do in the, um, in the loaded stretching class is is a good thing to do, but it's not really a stretch. It's it's more of a it's more of an internal rotation strengthening movement. It's I still a think primer. Yeah. yeah, it's a primer. I still think it's a really good exercise to do. I just was trying to force it. That yeah. was a big lesson for me. I was trying to force 
progression because I wasn't going and I didn't know it back then. That's how I learned about FAI hip. I didn't even know that I had FAI hip. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I didn't know that it prevented internal rotation. So I tried to force something that my body was never going to go to and I hurt myself. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah. you know, that's a, a really big in, uh, insight, you know, that, that, and Phil, I know that Phil would be um, banging this drum if he was on the podcast with us. You do have to take into consideration that there are, uh, body body parts that will in the, that will potentially interfere with your stretch looking identical to rad stretch or my stretch or someone else that you see on instagram that posts a photo you know and there are some people that just won't be able to achieve the perfect position because their joints just don't really allow it you know and uh so it's just just like calisthenics flexibility training is a very personal journey for everybody and it's a process of self-discovery you've got to work around your limitations and you've got to um sort of maximize or or um uh i can't remember the word i'm 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 thinking of here you've you've got to make the best use of your strengths you know yeah for sure for sure We've got um, a couple of people here uh, uh, asking questions. Um, Lee Clemens, yep, doing foundations at the moment and stretches are great. Uh, interesting stuff from Diane Norbury. So much to learn. I'm so glad to have this knowledge. Thanks very much, Diane. Jodie Buttle saying she's back from Queensland. Get your butt in here. Yeah, yeah, um, that's it. Um, yeah, look, guys, I think the, you know, the key insight from today is, is that the optimal dosage is critical and it everybody responds differently you know um what i've you know i've i've gone through phases with my training where i've done certain things twice a week like on monday and thursday and i found that i was always sore and i felt like i always had these flexibility doms and so i backed off some of the exercises so even even if you've got one of our master classes like the mobility master class or the mobility master class version two that we're going to re- release tomorrow or um, the, the Presta Handstand Masterclass has a lot of um, uh, flexibility training in it, a lot of compression training. Um, you Even if the program says you should do it twice a week, that is, um, I'll rephrase that, even if the program uh, has two days a week of doing the same thing, you have to see how that works for your body. And if you find that it's causing you to be in constant DOMS and you're not recovering properly, like you should be fully recovered when you do that that next workout on the same uh, body part. And if you're not, then reduce it to one day a week, even though the program says do it twice a week. Yeah. There is no one size fits all approach for this stuff. You have to figure out what works for you individually. And what we do is work our butts off to provide a, a blueprint um, of, uh, you know, the framework of what works. And then you have to you know, through experimentation, figure out what works yeah. for you. And that, and if you're, that's, that's what the, I mean, this group is great for that too, because you will get feedback, but the UMS online coaching group, that's what we've created that group for, because we help those guys uh, basically design their own programs. They use our framework as a blueprint, and then they are building their own workouts and their own routines and their own <laughs> programs. And that's the whole, um, the whole point behind that group. Uh, we have lots of new people in there. Um, I want to give a, a couple of good shout outs. Uh, remembering guys that we have our live group coaching call, weekly group coaching call tomorrow, straight after this show at 9.15. I know we made a mess of it last week. We got finished late on this show and then had a couple of phone calls and a couple of people walk in. Unfortunately, we're, we're, <laughs> I say unfortunately, but fortunately we're getting quite popular in this area. So we have a lot of people dropping into the gym who are wanting to sign up and things like that. And it's just us at the moment where we're about to get a manager at the gym so that we can not have to jump out of there straight away when people come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, we make, m- m- mucked up the time last week. We're going to be on time tomorrow, 9.15 yep. in the UMS online coaching group. Get your questions ready. we got a couple couple of people's uh, videos to analyze, a couple of newbies who are posting their first uh, workout videos that I want to give some cred to and some feedback to. And uh, yeah, other than that, tomorrow we're going to be bringing this in for a landing, going really deep in how to deload for stretching, what happens, why to do it, how to do it. And uh, yeah, sort of talk about where mobility training and and routines like the 18 minute mobility or the six minute um, uh, squat routine and things like that come into play. All the ultimate warm up, you know, uh, our warm ups we recommend people do as a mobility routine if they they do nothing else, you know. 
Uh, we're going to bring it all in for a landing tomorrow. Uh, we're very, very um, excited for the possibility that we launch this new program tomorrow. We're working our butts off in the back end to get all that done and produced. Uh, that's going to be called the Flexibility Blueprint. It's under a new name. Uh, it is essentially version 2.0 of the Mobility Masterclass. Sorry, it's the, the Flexibility, Flexibility Masterclass. Masterclass Flexibility yeah. Masterclass. I got that wrong. <laughs> It is the version two. It is a, an evolution of the Mobility Masterclass, but we now have the names right. And we've <laughs> been wanting to do this for about a year and a half. And we've been told by our marketing team, it's just too big a nightmare to change the names now because those programs are so well known. But Rad and we're I, going forward now. we've had yeah. sleepless nights over this. We're just, yeah. We just feel like we're doing it wrong. And we've known that for years. So now we've finally rebranded them as the uh, mobility, 18 minute mobility routine, and this will be the flexibility masterclass. Nice. That's right. Very exciting, guys. Very exciting. All right. That's it. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow uh, to wrap up this week of uh, flexibility coaching. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept <laughs> what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.